Hello everyone. So today we're going to be making a scratch game and this game is called Heart Kicker. So let's begin by making that game on scratch. See you in a bit. So this is the project that we're going to create. It's called Heart Clicker. So right here we have a title and then we have a button. So when I click on the start button, a bunch of hearts start falling from the top to the bottom. And as I click them, I start to gain points, as you see here. So the tapping is done by my mouse. Once my mouse is over the heart, I gain a point whenever I click on them. And that's the game. And what it's using is a clone to create copies of these hearts. And then it's randomly moving from left to right and dropping them from all the way from the top to the bottom. Okay, we're gonna begin our tutorial. First, head to the Scratch web page and log in with your account. The next procedure we need to do is click on Create. Once you click on Create, it will open up to the page where you can start creating your project. So once we're here, the first thing we'd like to do is change the project name. So we're gonna call this Heart Clicker. Next, we want to remove this cat as we won't be using it. Now, in every game, there's usually a background. So the same thing is gonna to apply to our game. We're gonna add in two backgrounds. So we're gonna click on this. And over here in the Scratch library, you can pick any color or any background that you like. I am gonna stick with a simple blue sky too. And then to edit it, I'm gonna click on backdrops. So I have a backdrop one which is blank, but we're not gonna use it. So we click on it and press on the X. So we have one over here. So I'm gonna rename this with start game. So that is my first backdrop. Then I'm gonna duplicate this. So right click and duplicate. And I'm gonna call this the game screen. So start game is just what happens when we start our game. Game screen is where the main game is. So as we begin on this, we would like now to add in text. So we can click on this T and you can pick on any color that you like. So I'll just stick with green and you can change your font styling to whatever you like. I use marker. Here we're gonna click on this page here and we'll type in a heart. Now you may notice that the words are quite small, not to worry, you can click over here and just drag this like that. And it makes the words much bigger. And you can even drag it and position it. So I'm just gonna leave, leave it in the middle. Next, what we'd like to do is we'd like to add a button. So most games have a start button. We'd like to do the same here. So we can head here, click on choose a sprite. And in this sprite library, they actually have a button over here. So we click on this. And then we can place this down over here. We can click on costumes and you can delete the second button. And here, we're gonna click on T again, as we wanna add in text. And you can change the color over here. So I'm just gonna stick to blue. And inside here, I'll just type in all caps start. If you're unhappy with the color, you can click on fill again. Make sure you highlight the word and then you can just change it. So you can choose any color that you like. Say you want this, you can leave it at that and just click over here. Once that's done, you're good to go with this page. If you want to change the size, you can always go here and change it to maybe 200 and make the button bigger and then place it over here. So as we have our button, we'd like to add some actions. And to do that, we need to add some coding blocks. First, we click on events, and then we take out when sprite clicked. So I'll make this a bit bigger. So this block, when sprite clicked, what this means is it's an event. And in this event, it only runs when we, the user, click on this button with our mouse. So the next thing we do is we click on looks and we take out the hide block here because when we click on this block, we want it to hide. And then we want it to change the backdrop to the game screen. Next, 
is we click on the events and take out a green flag. So this is when we click on the green flag. That means when we start our game. So when we start our game, we want it to be seen. We click on show, scroll down here, take out show. Next, when we click on this here, we want to show this background. So we take out switch backdrop and we click on the start game, which is here. So when we click on this, we're here. And then the next thing we want to do is make a variable. So the variable we call this score. That's an S C O R E. But when we start the game, we don't want to see this score on top over here. We want it to be hidden. In order to hide that, we have an option in variables. You will see a hide over here. Hide variable, and then you change this to score. So when you click on this, the score variable is hidden. The button is here, the text is here, and this background is here. Once you click this, you go to the next page. So back to the backdrops here. Um, this is blue in color. For this, you can pick in any color you like. So I'm going to click on the paint, and you can select whichever color you want. If you want yellow, you can do yellow. Since it's a Valentine sort of game, I will go with a color of red here. So after you've selected that color, the next thing is we want to start our game and we want to add in our main character. So the main sprite we're using is a heart. You can click on choose a sprite. Here we can click heart. So with this heart here, we can move this over here. You can click on costume and you have two options. You can either click whichever one you want. If, say, you want the purple heart, you can keep that. If you don't want the red heart, you can just delete it. And you can keep the purple heart. Next, we'd like to maybe decrease the size as the heart is quite big. You can change this to 50. And if you still want it a bit smaller, you can change it maybe to 45. So as we have our heart, what we want to do here is that when we are on this background, we want to show the score variable as our game is starting. We click on events, we take out the when backdrop switch to just increase this. So as we know, this is called game screen. And then we click on variables and we take out the show variable. So this is where we can see our variable score. Next, we want to actually hide this heart. So we click on looks and we use hide. Let me place this here. Next, the thing is when we start a game with score, as you know, anytime you play any game, our score starts with zero. So the same thing has to be applied to this game too. Click on variables and we take out set my variable to zero and you can change this to set score to zero. So now when we click this, we notice there's a little issue. When I start my game, the heart has disappeared. But when I click that, the heart was just now there. So in order to have the game start properly, we can click on Control and take out a wait until. So now the heart is gone, but since I had the hide. But then again, my heart is hidden. But I want to show a bunch of other hearts. So what I can do is I click on this wait until and I keep it here. And then I go to operator. So in operator, we have a equal sign here. We can place this here and we can change this to number two. So the reason why we're changing this to the number two is if we go back to our backdrops, you'll see that number one is start game. Number two is our game screen. So what we're telling this heart is that we'll wait until it's the second backdrop. And to choose that, you go to looks, you scroll down, you'll see background number, and then you just add that here. Next, we're gonna take out a forever block as we want an action to be repeated continuously. So we take out forever. And what we'd like to happen is we want it to create a clone. 
So clone and scratch is where it makes a duplicate, or in other words, a copy of this heart. So we scroll down, and you shall see this block. It's called create a clone of myself. So when I click this, we have said that we'll create a clone. But now what we need to do is give it instructions as to what will it do when it becomes a clone. So that is in the next part over here. So I can bring this back up it a bit. And then here we can take out when I start as a clone. So this here is when our clones start to appear on our screen. Then we click on the forever block as we'll be using that. We want all the actions inside here to continuously happen. So first, when we begin, we want to see the clone. So we scroll down here and take out show. Next, what we'd like to do is we want the heart to go in a random position on our screen. To do that, we click on motion and we take out the go to X, Y block here. And then we click on operators and take out pick random. Now pick random is a block where it will randomly go anywhere if you give it a range. So this is the smallest value, this is the biggest value. So we need two of these blocks. So please make sure you take out two of them. You can also duplicate them and paste them inside. So for the X axis, it goes from negative 240 to 240. So we're gonna put that here, negative 240 to 240. Zero. Now for the y-axis here, we have a different value. So that's going to be minus 180 to 180. So now that we have added this, the heart will randomly move around. The next action we'd like to take is that we want these hearts to go from the top and come all the way down. And to do that, instead of using a forever loop or a repeat loop, we're gonna use something called a repeat until. So this block is used when we want an action to be repeated until a certain condition is met. So we click on control, take out this repeat until. And what we're gonna place here is, we're gonna repeat whatever action we put inside this block until this heart these hearts reach the edge. So we're going to take out the touching here and we can change this to touching edge. Next, what we'd like to do is click on motion and take out the change Y as we want it to fall down and when anything goes from up to down on the axis, that's on the Y axis. So here we have put change Y, but with a positive number, it would go up. So Here's where we can make the game a little interesting. We can take our pick random. And we want the computer to pick a random number between negative five over here to negative 10. So the computer will pick a random number and the heart will move down slow or a bit more quicker. And it'll randomly happen with each and every clone. Next, what we'd like to add is that if this heart is touching the edge, we want it to disappear because we want more hearts to follow from the top. So we want it to be a continuous process of hearts falling from the top, coming down, disappearing, and then having more come from the top. So we click on control, and then we take out a if touching, and we put this inside here. So once again, we're gonna be using the same block, if touching edge, so we click on sensing, Take out if touching edge and we place this here. And then what we can do here is click back on control. And then you will see a delete clone. So your clone will be deleted. So this is how our coding process has gone so far. So the next thing we'd like to add is that in this game, we want to make a score. And how do we do that? By clicking on these hearts. So we can click on events, take out the when this sprite clicked. And then very simply, you can head to variables, take out your change my variable, and change this to change score by one. So 
when we begin at this background, we start at zero. And then our main heart is hidden. And then we wait until it changes to this backdrop. And then we start creating clones of myself, which is referring to the heart. Next, when a clone is created, it's shown, it randomly goes according to the X and Y axis range that we've added. And then constantly, until it reaches the edge, it'll keep on going from the top of the screen to the bottom. And then whenever they touch the bottom, they will be deleted. And whenever our mouse is clicking on these hearts, our score is changed by one. So let's check it out. Let's see if everything works well. So we have heart clicker, we have the background, we have the button. So we've added the button code here of saying that when we click on the sprite, we want this to be hidden and we wanted to change the game screen. And we've also said that when the game, when we've clicked on the green, we've also said that when green flag clicked, we want this button to be shown, show the start game background and hide the variable. So let's do that. So there you have a bunch of hearts falling and they're cloning and they're falling from the top to the bottom. And whenever you click them, you get a score. So I'm not the best at this game. Hopefully you guys are much better. But this is the heart clicker game that we have created. And if you want to restart the game, no problem. Just click on the green flag. You're back at the start point. And this is the end of our tutorial. So that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you guys had fun. If you like this video, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to First Code Academy for more fun tutorials on YouTube. See you soon. Bye-bye.